the second Sunday of Advent, as we think about the coming of Jesus Christ, we light the candle of peace. Jesus Christ is our peace. He is the Prince of Peace, and the fruit of his presence is peace. Christ comes to bring justice, wholeness, and harmony to every relationship throughout all creation. He wants to continually grant us peace in every situation. Jesus, we pray, guide our feet into the path of peace.
Gospel reading comes from the book of Mark, chapter 1, verses 1 through 8. The beginning of the good news about Jesus Christ, God's Son, happened just as it was written about in the prophecy of Isaiah. Look, I am sending my messenger before you. He will prepare your way. A voice shouting in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord, make his path straight. John the Baptist was in the wilderness calling for people to be baptized to show that they were changing their hearts and lives and wanted God to forgive their sins. Everyone in Judea and all the people of Jerusalem went out to the Jordan River and were baptized by John as they confessed their sins. John wore clothes made of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist. He ate locusts and wild honey. He announced, one stronger than I am is coming after me. I'm not even worthy to bend over and loosen the strap of his sandals. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Before I begin sermon this day, let us begin with prayer. Heavenly Father, you have offered us a way through the darkness to your light. Be with us this day as we stand before you with many mixed emotions. Father, we desire to be with one another, and yet we cannot be. Help us to understand what it is that we are to do and who we are to be in the midst of this pandemic. Father, there are many in our midst who have been touched by sickness and even death in these past few months, and our hearts ache for one another. Father, break through the clutter and the darkness that is within us. Remind us again of the wonders that you have in store for us already. Calm our spirits and lift our hearts. Father, we have lifted so many names and situations to you each and every day for healing and comfort. Today we also bring ourselves for you and your care and mercy. Father, help us to remember that you are always with us. You have come to us in the person of Jesus Christ, that we might come out of our darkness and into the light of your kingdom. Heal and protect us, gracious Lord. Shine your light again in our lives that we may see that the true spirit of this season is in loving and taking time to listen and share you with others. So Father, cause our hearts to stir this day. Allow us to understand in a new way your desire for us to be the bearers of good news to all those that we know. We ask for your steadying hand to guide us as we move through this world, sharing Jesus Christ and your love in the darkness that surrounds us. We ask this all in Jesus' precious name. Amen. So today you have heard the very beginning of the Gospel of Mark. If one only heard or took in the very first verse of the passage, the beginning of the good news about Jesus, the Messiah, the Son of God. We don't get the same from Matthew. In Matthew, we get the, ge the genealogy of Jesus, the Messiah, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Abraham was the father of Isaac, Isaac the father of Jacob, followed by 17 verses of who was whose father. 
through 14 generations from Abraham through David to Jesus before we begin to hear of the birth of Christ. In Luke, we get an introduction as to why the story is being carefully researched and written down. It is because Luke was tasked to do the research to make sure that it was the absolute accurate truth and truthful accounting of the entire life of Jesus. In John, it is a more theological book. It is meant to show from the very beginning of time that the relation, what the relationship between Jesus and God is. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was God and with God from the beginning. Mark doesn't share the story of Christ coming into the world. No angelic visit to Mary, no manger, no shepherds, no three wise men, and no youthful Jesus stories along the way. Just the proclamations of John the Baptist coming from the wild to preach to the people, to repent of their sins, and to prepare for the coming of Christ. We are called to prepare and to expect something in these days of Advent. But I wonder how often it is that we do not do either of these things. We do not prepare, nor do we expect. And as I reflected upon Advent this week, these particular points struck me in light of those two questions. In light of these two questions, certainly. What are we preparing for in Advent? And what are our expectations of this season and the coming of Christ? Last week in the sermon, I asked everyone to think about someone who may or may not have hope in the midst of the life that they are living. How we might be able to be an impact upon family, neighbors, and the world in general around us by sharing Christ as the one who gives us hope in the midst of all things. We know that at this time of year, people are more prone to think about Christ and church. Jesus is in most Christmas carols. One cannot go to some store, turn on the radio or television, and not hear or see some mention of Christmas. Jesus does get a fair amount of advertising during this season, even if it's not necessarily in the right vein. In our preparation for Advent, I had suggested that we need to look beyond ourselves. We need to prayerfully consider others who are consumed by and with the world, and as a result are living lives that, if this is the best it is, this is the best they give. Lives that are led in contradiction of God's instructions for how we should recognize ourselves as people desperately in need of a Savior. At this time of year, when the message should be that Jesus is coming, and he is coming for a reason, in the Gospel of Luke, Jesus himself explains why he had come. In Luke chapter 19, verse 10, Jesus said, He had come into the world to seek and to save that which is lost. Why is, it that, why is it that at this time of the year we seem unwilling to proclaim this as well? Has Jesus found you? Have you been saved? We are all lost before we repent and come into a relationship with Jesus Christ. All are saved to acknowledge Jesus as their Savior and live lives fruitfully thereafter. Our sins have been nailed with him upon the cross. He has risen so that on that day of judgment, when we stand before God, we will be seen as washed clean by the blood of Jesus Christ. So in this season, though, I believe that we fall into a very easy trap. The idea that we have to get so deep into ourselves we can spend time waiting for some new thought or idea or some new revolution, revelation to come along. 
that we miss most of the important reason that we celebrate the season after all. And I wonder in light of Mark's gospel if we shouldn't be spending far less time on preparing ourselves for Christ's coming as we should spend time preparing the way for Christ's coming. It would seem to me that John the Baptist is a guy that we should be modeling ourselves after. A guy that likely wasn't invited into very many social situations. He seems to me the guy that would always have stood out, single-minded in his message, and knew that every place was the right time and place to share the good news about the coming of Jesus. We have fallen into the idea that it isn't socially acceptable to share Christ with others. Society has encroached so far upon the church and into Christians' lives that they too often are far more concerned about breaking some unknown social etiquette than we are to share Jesus Christ and why he has come into the world. Christians today are more concerned about what others will think of them than they are about what happens to others if they do not have the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ in their lives. That's a tough indictment, but I believe it to be true. If we believe that Christ is everything that we claim him to be, how do we dare not be blunt as John during the season of Advent in sharing him with others? Mark tells us that John preached on the importance of repentance if man was ever going to accept Christ and God's forgiveness. If we believe that well-being of a person's soul rests completely on the work of Christ and that people must acknowledge him for who he is, why do we become so focused on what we know or feel about him during this time of year and keep it to ourselves? I have had conversations with well-intentioned people over the course of this week that have suggested that this time of year is the time to take stock in ourselves, to think about all that we have gone through in this year, and to count our blessings. That places the focus squarely on ourselves, and inwardly, once again. And I am praying that you might see where you might, while you are seeking after Christ with all of your heart, mind, and soul, might also have opportunity to invite others along as well. The greatest blessing that we should know already is Christ himself. This time of year and perhaps the year that we are living in more than others, people are seeking to understand hope and peace when they just do not see it around them. The greatest gift that you could give to someone else greatest of gifts certainly are hope and peace and joy and love. And they all come from one person, Jesus Christ. So this is again an encouragement to reach out to those that you may have thought of last week. I hope that you did. I hope that you prayed for them during the week. Maybe you have even had the opportunity to talk to someone about Christmas and Christ and what he means to them. It's never too late to start. And if you aren't sure where to start, let me know. Talk to me. I'll be more than happy to talk to you and give you some ideas and pray with you and pray for them as well. And to my second point, I would just ask you again, what are your expectations of Christmas? Or even to shorten that since it's getting to be Christmas quickly, what are you expecting from Christ? Are you expecting your eternal Savior? If you are, then I would encourage you to think much bigger. That seems odd. And I know that Christ is everything for many of you. But he is not a gift that arrives on Christmas just for you. He is a gift that comes at just the right time for all people so, so that forgiveness of sin and being made right in God's eyes becomes possible. The gift that is perfect for each and every person 
the only gift that is that way. If you know Jesus Christ and you cannot then keep him for yourself, he should be the light of your life. A life that cannot be helped but be seen by others, by all that you would come into contact with. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Let those words from a couple thousand years ago sink in. God is so good that he allows us to hear him through his words. The story of Jesus Christ is not over yet. And for many, for someone, it is just the beginning. Jesus is the center of it all. We talk about hope and joy and peace and love during Advent. And so many need to hear that God is still providing these things in this world. Christ is still willing to bring the promise of comfort and healing to everyone. The amazing thing is that you and I get to be a part of it. Each of us, each one of us, has a role to play in sharing Christ with others. For someone, it might be the gift that is the beginning of an eternal life in heaven. So let us be a part. Let us be a part of the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, Son of God, for someone. Let us pray. Father, we thank you. We thank you for your grace and your mercy. We thank you for the coming of Jesus Christ into this world and into our lives. And forgive us that we do not always acknowledge you as the source of hope and peace and joy and love. Grant to us the courage and the boldness to share the good news of Jesus Christ into the world around us. We ask this all in your Son's name, and as he taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.